All right, welcome back everyone to Abandon and Alone, a Mythos Busters production. My name is Ian and I'm one of the Mythos Busters. And if this is your first time tuning in, well, you've turn, tuned in for a doozy because uh, of the particular scenario I'm playing. But uh, Abandon and Alone is a series where I take and investigate our solo through a campaign. Currently, I'm in the middle of taking Joe Diamond through the Return to Dunwich Legacy campaign. And uh, it's been a while. Um, I was looking back through the history, and I think my last stream, I was talking about playing this scenario during Halloween. <laughs> so that gives me an idea of how long it's been. I'm sorry about that. Uh, lots of stuff in the interim interrupted, like holidays, etc. Um, but I'm back. I'm really aiming this time to get this to be more regular and also looking into some more format potential formats for the abandoned alone series um not to replace uh, twitch streaming but just as a uh, extra stuff so look forward to that so um since it's been a while if you remember uh what happened in blood on the altar is that i defeated silas bishop um, just straight up, I wasn't, uh, kind of, uh, I can't remember the term for it, not redeeming, but, uh, doing the ritual to cleanse him, to exercise him, uh, instead I just straight up dissolved him with acid, if I remember correctly, uh, and two people were sacrificed, uh, that would be, um, I'm trying to remember offhand, I believe it, it was Earl Sawyer, and Warren Rice, that's right. So Earl Sawyer and Warren Rice were sacrificed, so two sacrificed. So overall, not a bad performance, but uh, I was really hoping for the kind of investigate route. Anyway, today we're playing Undimension and Unseen, which is the worst possible matchup for Joe Diamond uh, because of his low willpower. If you've played this scenario before, you'll know that it demands more than anything good willpower. So, uh, despite our late start here, I don't think we're going to be going too late, honestly, because I'm not sure how long Joe Diamond is going to hold up. So let's go ahead and switch on over to, um, our actual gameplay to tabletop simulator, which is where all the magic happens. Uh, and we can do this thing. So, I have Joe Diamond here. I have the powder of Ibn Ghazi's out with three clues on it. Um, in terms of upgrades from last time around, I had four XP to spend. I grabbed kind of a, a weird loadout of new cards because usually I try to, you know, grab two copies when I can. But in this case, I grabbed one copy of Pathfinder, one copy of Well Prepared, and one copy of, uh, what was the other card? Uh, well prepared was basically to help boost my willpower was the thinking there. And I could have grabbed something like, say, physical training or, uh, some kind of boost where you can spend to boost my willpower. But I actually didn't want to tech too heavy for this scenario. Because, uh, to be honest, I'm kind of thinking of it as a wash. I'm probably not going to do too great no matter how I tech. And I'd rather not like include something that's uh, suboptimal for, say, where Duma waits in the later scenarios. So I, I don't want to, you know, tech too much for this. I thought well prepared was a nice balanced uh, card that could be good for the re the remainder of the campaign. Um, and the final card I added was uh, ever vigilant. Uh, now I'm remembering to that's a card I've been eyeing a while for this deck to get it going quicker uh, my hunch deck is pretty much what it's been through a lot of the campaign delay the inevitable is kind of a card I just play when it comes up uh, since I don't believe beyond the veil is in this scenario uh, for beyond the veil scenarios I've been in, uh, including this in my deck instead of the hunch deck so that I can keep it in hand for when I need it a uh, scene of the crime of scene of the crime of course no stone unturned and prep sketches for card draw uh working a hunch uh for some more uh free clues and uh yeah that's pretty much the loadout there i'll go ahead and shuffle that up and i haven't drawn my opening hand yet 
So let's see what happens. Let's draw the opening hand. Uh, okay, Francis Morgan, Pathfinder. Take the initiative. Luxley in shortcut. Um, it's not bad. Pathfinder is going to be good for this to help me move quickly. Uh, Morgan... He gives me a combat boost. Luxley gives me an intellect boost. I don't think I need both. I, I need a weapon more. I think I'm going to throw back, take the initiative. I'm going to throw back shortcut and probably one of the two allies. Because uh, I want to get a weapon out. Uh, the weapons, of course, don't help against the broods in this scenario. But they do help against uh, some other nasty enemies that are in there. So who do I want more? Do I want the intellect more or the combat? Um, it's a tough one. Uh, and chat, Jailbird's asking, do I have an I'll see you? So I can take out at least one brood. Um, I do not. <laughs> um, again, that's one of those things of not wanting to tech too heavily. But it's not a bad idea. Um, I think this is the classic uh, dilemma, right? Do you go more intellect? Do you go more combat heavy and after you discover a clue you can exhaust to deal one damage to an enemy at your location interesting I think I'm gonna go Luxley for now and prioritize clues early on let's draw three to replace we got the folding camera we got the uh, level two shortcut and we got Malison. Okay, no weapons, which is going to be a problem if I draw enemies early. We'll see. Um, as part of the setup for the scenario, I also had to grab a new weakness, which was Chronophobia. I'm starting here at Denwich Village and I'm starting with a random brood in play. This is Return to Denwich Legacy, remember? So instead of the generic broods, we got these nasty ones. And <laughs> just as a side note before we get started, I think the Return version can up the difficulty too much on Undimensioned, at least in solo. Um, because I've always liked the idea behind this scenario, but it can sometimes be tough for certain investigators. And then look at this thing. So it gets plus two per investigator health. So it's at four health. Cannot be damaged or attacked except using the ability on Esoteric Formula, which is standard. If you remember the Esoteric Formula, you fight using your will instead of combat. You get plus two will for the, the attack for each clue on the attacked enemy. Use only on an abomination. If you notice one important thing, um, it only does one damage. And this thing takes four damage to die. Which means I need to hit it four times with Joe's ridiculously low willpower. Um, so I'm thinking I'm probably not going to be going for this one. That's like... My idea is to get at least one brood down would be a success. <laughs> More than likely, I'm going to be getting out of here with no broods. Um, but if I'm aiming for one, this is probably not the guy. <laughs> I'm probably going to look for one of the other broods. So, yeah. I'm probably going to be kind of biding my time until another brood pops out. Uh, speaking of which, we've got five Doom to go on the first agenda. At the end of the enemy phase, I have to move each brood once towards a random location. Uh, and to advance past the first act, I need to be in the Waitley Ruins and spend two clues. So, we starting here in Dinwich Village, which is the resign location. That's, that'll be important for me <laughs> if I can get out and resign. Uh, let's see how I want to start this off. First things first, I have this little marker that I've been using to remind myself to draw from the hunch deck since I'm so bad at remembering that. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and we get working a hunch to start. That's great. We'll go ahead and use that right away for free. Thanks to Joe's ability. Grab a clue. Cool. We got one out of two. Um, how do I want to play this? The camera is going to be important to raise my willpower. So I probably want to put that down. Uh, Pathfinder is going to be great to move around quickly. But do I want to save some resources for getting a gun out is the question. I can also do a shortcut here. Just trying to, is this the best shortcut spot? Probably. I mean, it would be either here or Waitley Ruins would be a good shortcut spot. Or I could get out Malison. Um, actually, Malison might not be a bad play in case I draw an enemy with no weapon. So I might content myself with that for now, actually. Um... So just catching up on chat here, Jailbird's mentioning uh, I may just need to be prepared to let one of them get really buffed and hide from it while you snipe another. Yeah, that's pretty much my plan is kind of let one or two of the others get beefy and just pick one. Whatever seem, one seems the most ripe for Joe to grab and then book it to the, the resign location. <laughs> I'm not going to get more cute than that. Uh Okay. All right. Um, I think I'm going to hold on to the shortcut. Maybe there's a better spot. Uh, I do need to get out of here, though, because if the brood moves on to me, it's going to hurt. So maybe I do put the shortcut here. Just so I have another action to work with. Okay, let's put the shortcut right here. I mean, we don't know how long this scenario is going to last, so let's not uh, overthink it too much. So I'm going to attach it here as a fast action. I'm going to exhaust it and move to a connecting location, which is up here in Blasted Heath. Part of the reason I wanted the extra action is because I know there's a version of Blasted Heath that does damage to you, I believe, if you end your turn there. Uh, yeah, at the end of your turn, if you're on Blasted Heath, take one damage. Not the end of the world, but uh, I don't want to take some free damage for no good reason. So let's uh, move it on over to Devil's Hopyard, which does... Uh, has one clue and as a free trigger I can place one of my clues on an abomination enemy in Devil's Hopyard. Cool. That may came, come in handy later. That's going to do it for my uh, first investigator phase. Now the enemy phase at the end. This is going to move. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle this location deck. And Blasted Heath is what it's going to move towards and so the closest location will be over here so good thing i moved out of there huh <laughs> this is shortcuts gonna ready we're gonna do our other upkeep stuff get a resource card emergency aid all right that'll do it for turn one one doom out of five And remember our Malison. So we do have the Malison option available. First card is Ruin and Destruction. Uh, sorry, I'm going all topsy turvy. <laughs> um, if there are no investigators at this same location as a brood of Yog Sothoth, Ruin and Destruction Gate Surge. That is true. Surge. 
Tearing Beast. Attach to a brood of Yoxus Thoth. Enemy in play. If that enemy is at your location, take one damage. Attach enemy gets pl plus one fight and plus one health. Yeah. So uh, this thing is sitting at seven fight and a <laughs> ridiculous five health. Yeah, I'm never touching that thing. Ever. Uh, okay, so it's my turn now. Uh, hunch deck is unsolved case. You know, I really am not sure whether I'm going to get any experience from this, so I'm kind of tempted to just let Unsolved Case go off. Honestly. Like, a lot of this campaign with Joe Diamond has been, uh, like minimizing my losses and risk mitigation and <laughs> just accepting the inevitable it's been a very uh, uh mythos arkham s campaign in that way okay so this is two shroud here i should be able to grab that without too much trouble and that'll trigger my camera so let's start off investigating at four v2 and not gonna pitch anything. Let's just do that. Zero. Okay. And uh, I forgot to grab a copy of my tokens here so I can remember what nastiness they do. Minus one for each brood for the skull. Reveal another token if you fail. Take one horror. Tablet is a zero. You must either remove all clue tokens from a brood or treat the modifier as negative four. And the worst is the uh, elder thing, minus three. And if it's revealed during an attack or evasion, um, it immediately attacks you. Notice that's not a fail. Like mo most of the time, that would be a hard version. Usually e easy standard tokens will say if you fail. But this is just straight up if it gets revealed. So one of the many reasons why this scenario is nasty. Anyway, I got my clue. Uh, and that's going to trigger the camera. And that does mean uh, that my will is now three willpower instead of two, which is good. And I have enough clues to advance. So I think since uh, the brood is on the other side of the map... I can safely go into Waitley's Ruins and stay there if I need to. And this has two clues, two shroud. Each investigator at the Ruins gets minus one will. Oh, there goes my bump. <laughs> and I can test Intellect 4 and if successful, move a brood in any direction. Potentially useful, we'll see. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and satisfy this act. Investigators at Waitley Ruins may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. And let me just double check. Two clues, yep. Spend my two clues. Boop. Let's advance this thing. Uh, if Dr. Armitage survived the Denwich Legacy, he did. Uh, we'll put into play the esoteric formula. Um, and we'll just put it in our arcane slot since we're not using it. <laughs> uh, this is the one we mentioned before where I can fight using will instead of combat. This is how I'm going to take out the broods. Uh, okay. And now we're on act two. Defeat as many brood of Yogg-Sothoth enemies as you can. If there are no copies in play or set aside, advance. Uh, that's not going to happen. Um, so basically this is the rest of our mission here. We got what we need. Uh, at this point, it's just a matter of getting clues, so we're uh, well set up to take down the enemy. Um, you know, one of the problems for Joe, in addition to his low will, is his low agility for this. Because to use the powder of Ibn Ghazi, you can move one clue to an exhausted brood uh, and notice they have to be exhausted. And Joe is not good at exhausting. So I might have been wise to include some tech for exhausting. Um, 
but I don't have much there. And so I'm going to have to be relying more on location effects and the powder isn't going to be too useful, which kind of sucks because that's a good way to get stuff. Like this brood has two evade, so that's actually a little bit doable for Joe. But of course I'm not taking on that one. Um, I kind of like where I'm at. Uh, do I want to get another clue? Probably. Or do I need to fish for a weapon let's just grab another clue because that can help with malice if i need it so four to two i saved the wrong camera let's do that again okay four to two uh minus one so minus one for the one brood in play we'll go ahead and grab that clue so at least we have some malice and fuel. Um, if you don't remember, uh, when you draw an encounter card, you can exhaust malice and place one of your clues on your location to cancel that card, shuffle it, draw a new one instead. So you got to have a clue to use it. So that's what I mean by malice and fuel. Okay, this is um, at the end of the investigator phase. This is going to add to my threat area and this basically just means uh, unsolved case means that i am gonna earn two fewer experience that's fine and uh, draw a card please be a weapon nope fish is blow kind of like a weapon but not really uh, doom two out of five and we get an encounter card which is another towering piece <laughs> This dude is Oh, I forgot to do the the movement. Sorry. Hopefully, I won't do that often. Uh, ten acre meadow, so he's gonna move towards me. That that happened at the end of the last enemy phase. Um, so this thing has two tearing beasts. It is now eight fight and six health. <laughs> well, at least he can kind of just uh, keep those things on him for a while, right? My turn. Hunch deck. Uh, prep sketches. You know, that's actually not a bad call right now to find a weapon. So I think I'm going to spend an action to draw with prep sketches. I do. There's a clue on my location so I can draw three. And normally this is a two cost card. Of course, it's zero uh, as part of the hunch deck. Uh, okay, cool, I got a weapon, so let's, yeah, let's put that thing down. Enchanted blade. Um, okay. So, here's the thing. Again, I really don't want to be... Although I would like to be here to get this clue, I needed to do a bit of setup this turn. And like I could have played Pathfinder and still got the clue and got away, but I know there's enemies in here that I need to deal with, and so I wanted a, a weapon out. Stat. Um, yeah, basically I have to move, even though it takes me away from this clue, because... Again, given Joe's low agility and how massive this thing is, I do not want to be stuck with it. So I'm going to move up to the Devil's Hopyard. And the end of the enemy phase, it is going to move somewhere. Let's see where. Devil's Hopyard. Okay, so good thing I moved. That's exactly why I moved. Uh, and now let's do our upkeep stuff. That was my last action. Okay, draw a card. Get a resource. Okay. We're at Doom 3 out of 5. And we get is our encounter card. Unhallowed count country put into my threat area. You cannot play ally assets. I have to treat the printed text box of my ally assets as if they were blank. And at the end of my turn, I test Will 3. So Malison is blank right now. 
Uh, that's that that's not great, but uh, I think I'm just gonna let that ride just because <laughs> with Malison, unless it's like something that you really really need to avoid, you could throw something back and get potentially get something worse back out. So I'm not gonna attempt fate that way. Um. So what we're gonna do. Is let's see what we should do. Uh, well, we clearly can't go back this way, so we're gonna move here as action one. Oh, sorry, hunch deck first. Yeah, that's fine. It's a uh, no stone unturned. So move as first action. Uh, these clues here are easier to grab, but I might as well just try to grab one here while I am here. Uh, okay, so I'm at four to three when it comes to this location. Um, actually, let's move twice and get to here. My thinking is I want to power up my camera a little bit more in the best place. Like, basically, with this two shroud, I can get these clues off easier. I still have some time before the brood gets to me. Uh, and then with powered up intellect it'll make it easier to get clues from like this three shroud here for example so with my last action i'll investigate at 4v2 uh do i commit my emergency aid to go up by to go up one just thinking that i do have another one in there in my hand i'm getting close to my hand size cap yeah let's do it let's go up by three so 5v2 i uh, didn't need to do it but that's fine minus one we get a clue and that's gonna do it this is gonna get shuffled back into my hunch deck this brood is going to move to a random location, which ends up being Devil's Hop Yard. So I'm gonna move up here. That's fine. It finally clears out this uh, bottom area, which I haven't gotten to look at yet. Let's do upkeep. Chronophobia. Okay, I'm gonna have to deal with that. Um, and I also should test for my unhallowed country, and I'll just do that at 3 to 3. Well, look at that. So, unhallowed country gets discarded, and I can move an inside event to the uh, from my discard pile to the bottom of my hunch deck. Hmm. Well, well, well probably um, put my working a hunch back there so let's see to the bottom of my hunch deck I'm just figuring out the timing here so I tested unhallowed at the end of my turn and the hunch deck gets shuffled at the end of the phase. Yeah, so this would be shuffled in. Cool. Okay, so we're now at 4 out of 5 Doom. We get... The Lupine Thrall. Those, that's one of the nasty enemies I talked about. Farthest location from me. Farthest location from me, huh? 
Did I malice in this thing? Is it worth it to malice in? Hmm. It might be. I mean, I have a weapon, but the thing, this thing is annoying as a four combat retaliate, and it might slow me down just enough to get beat up by a brood. When I'm ideally trying to get a brood soon, farthest location for me, so that would be, um, like up in the Devil's Hopyard or Waitley Ruins. I might be able to maneuver around it, but soon there's going to be two broods on the board on this thing. Uh, okay, I think I'm going to, well, yeah, I think I'm going to malice in it, actually. We'll see if I live to regret that. Or die to regret it. So it gets discarded and we're going to draw something else. <laughs> really now? Okay, so this one goes on me. Well, you know, I'd actually rather that. Uh, because it's uh, 5 fight, but it gets reduced by 3. Three. Oh no, that's a firearm. Mm. Range firearm or spell? Actually, oof. range. The, my enchanted blade is none of those. It's not range. It's not a firearm. It's not a spell. Yeah, that's not good. So it is gonna be five fight. Well, you know, in the grand scheme, like, I got rid of a lupine. Otherwise, it would have been a lupine thrall followed by an avian thrall if they were back-to-back -back and then counter deck. So maybe it wasn't the worst play. Um, Jailbird mentioning in chat, if you take a hit from a brood, it will exhaust. And there's a player window between that attack and when it readies that you can use the powder drop. Through. That's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. It's been a while since I played this one. Just got to take a hit from the big hitter <laughs> to do that. Uh, okay, I wanted to clear my chronophobia this turn. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. Let's see if the hunch deck gives us something to work with. Not really. It's no stone unturned. The brood at least can't reach me this turn. How do I want to play this? <gasps> mm. I think I just have to try to kill it. So one enchanted blade charge will take me up to six to five. And deal plus one. Yeah. We could throw a vicious blow in there. So we're at seven to five. And. Hmm. Since I'm throwing vicious blow in there. No. Does the vicious blow really even help? Maybe I just do Inquiring Mind. Which is going to take me to... Uh, so I'm at 6 to 5. That takes me up to 9 to 5. Okay, let's do that. Okay. So that's 1, 2 damage. And then that's my first action. Second action, we'll do it again. <laughs> I just six to five? Is that the best I can do unless I commit a vicious blow? <sighs> Ooh, do I want to waste a vicious blow on it? I kind of... Uh... Kind of do. Just so I can keep one of my char... Okay. Ah, that's terrible, but you know, there's not a lot of targets for vicious blow anyway, because it's not like I can use them on the on the brood. So four, five, six, we're at seven to five with that. <laughs> yeah, tentacle, of course. Um, okay, let's try it at one up. 
I really want to keep Zebulon around for the willpower test. But if I mess this up, I don't have any charges left. I'm just going to be punching it. Oh, this could get brutal fast. I think I got to keep Zebulon. I mean, worst comes to worst, I'm at the assigned location. Okay, let's do it. Six to five. Nope. Zebulon wouldn't have helped either, so. Okay, I'm going to take one damage and one horror, which I'm going to take on... Malison. Uh, and at the end of my turn, I take one direct horror from Chronophobia. That's going to shuffle into my hunch deck. I'm doing things a little bit out of order, sorry. But uh, it's not so far impacting anything. Let's see where the brood moves at the end of the enemy phase. Moves to Blasted Heath. Okay, so it's coming towards me. Not good. Not good. Nothing about this makes me happy right now. <laughs> and this scenario is turning a little south on me here. Let's see if my deck gives me something. Crack the case is not helpful at all right now. And the agenda advances. I don't remember offhand exactly what it does. Let's find out. Shuffle the discard pile into the encounter deck. So actually I wouldn't have gotten back-to-back -back thralls because this would have gotten shuffled. So the lupine thrall was probably better. Oops. That's what I mean about uh, Malison coming back to bite you sometimes. Spawn one of the set-aside broods at a random location. Okay. So let's get a random brood. We got the brood of... Uh, are these the new broods? Yeah. Uh, okay, Brood of Yog so Thoth gets plus one health. Um, so it's at two health. Um, six fight, two health, three agility. It spawns at a random location, which is. Devil Witch Village. Okay, sure. I didn't want to live anyway. Um, that was just the doom portion. Now we got a drawn encounter card too. And we get idle hands. Put it into my threat area. And if it's in my threat area, I can take two damage and discard idle hands to take an additional action. And at the end of my turn, I take one whore. What a time to get idle hands, huh? So I got a big brood on me. I got this avian thrall, which I don't have an answer for. And I got another big brood potentially coming my way. That resign action is looking real good, but I'm not going to trigger it yet. Because I'm not quite close to dead. Uh... Pfft. Um, just looking at this esoteric formula and powder of Imengazi connection. So I'm at four to f uh, first. Let's look at what the hunch deck. I don't think there's anything in there that can help me, but sure. No stone and turn again, huh? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> mm. Range, fire, arm, or spell. This could help me find a weapon. Is the thing. But in order to play it, I have to take an opportunity attack from the brood and this dude. But I can trigger the shortcut to get away from the massive brood so it's not engaged with me without taking an attack of opportunity. It does get me away from the resign loca <laughs> location, which I don't like. 
but it might not be bad. So let's move down to the Cold Spring Glen. Uh, each enemy there gets minus one evade. And after it's chosen as a random location, I can test Agility 3 to get out of dodge, basically. Well, that's not quite what I wanted. I would have liked to see a location with uh, clues uh, that lets me put clues from it onto a brood. Um, but that did not happen. So we'll just have to roll with it. Because uh, I'm thinking if this brood moves on to me, it'd be nice if I'm at a place where I can get clues on to him. But, eh. If he attacks me like Jailbird mentioned in chat, then I can uh, throw this powder stuff on him. Uh, okay, so that was no action so far. Now I'm going to take the opportunity attack. One, two. To use no stone unturned. <laughs> to search the top six cards of my deck and hope... And hope that we got some kind of weapon. One, two, three, four. Nope, no weapon. That is terrible. Like, a weapon here, a weapon here. Ugh. My strange solutions are on the bottom, so I completely miss on a weapon. Um, I'm wondering then, maybe I grab Take the Initiative. And I actually try to evade this thing. Because it's at 2 evade. Because this location gives it minus 1 evade. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Take the initiative. Uh, it loses 1. So it gives me 4 to 2. Um... This is pretty important. I might need to pitch my Pathfinder. Just because I don't know when I'm actually going to get to play it. Although that will help me get away from this thrall in the future. Yeah, but this is such an important test. Okay, I gotta pitch it. Five to two. Nope, didn't need to pitch it. That's fine though. It is exhausted. Um, with that in mind, I'm going to use shortcut to move up to 10 acre meadow, actually. <laughs> So each investigator at 10 Acre Meadow may place one of his or her clues on an abomination enemy in 10 Acre Meadow. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> I am going to trigger the free trigger on Idle Hands, take two damage, and get an extra action. So I have two actions, and I'll use those two remaining actions to clear Chronophobia. Okay, <laughs> that actually did turn out. I took some damage and some horror. Looking a little worse for wear, but that was, I think, the best line of there. That was a very puzzly turn, but I think that was actually the kind of the best course of action there. Uh, yeah. So, enemy phase. Let's do some brood movement. Let's start with this brood here, see where he goes. Cold Spring Glen. Uh, nope, does not go to me yet. Other one. Cold Spring Glen. Uh, that's one, two, one. Okay, so he's going to move here. This big boy is going to move there. This guy's going to ready. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. I wish the this guy moved on to me. 
because uh, now he's at the same location as the avian thrall and I'm gonna have to get away from the thrall somehow uh, okay so upkeep logical reasoning okay one doom out of six. Oh boy I did not want to draw that Uh, okay. Encounter card. <sighs> you have to be kidding me. Uh, uh yeah, I'm going to Malice in that. Like, even though it's getting rid of all my clues. I mean, I don't see that I have much choice. So let's discard the Avian Thrall. Draw something else is. Sorted and Silent. Okay. Uh, if I end my round at that location, I take one horror. Okay. <sighs> okay. Think first things first. Well, real first things first is the hunch deck. Working hunch. Cool. I'll play that immediately to grab a clue from here. Take that. Thank you. I'll move over to... Waitly Ruins to give myself some breathing room. I'll go ahead and investigate at 4v2. Nope. Mm. I really wanted to trigger my crack the case and get some extra, uh, extra resources. And I also wanted to buff my camera. Instead, I'm just going to have to get out of here so that the Thrall doesn't get me. Ah, not my, not the greatest turn. Can't all be winners. Some of them would be nice if some of them were. <laughs> so Thrall moves towards me. And let's do this Broods movement first, the big boy. Devil's Hop Yard. So that would get to move up here. Uh-oh. And the smaller brood is going to move Devil's Hopyard. Okay. Well, 